All right, so um, in the science of mind, we don't teach people what to think. I think that Ernest Holmes was very clear in his understanding. He wanted to teach, teach people how to think in a creative way because the universe that we live in is responding to our thinking all the time. So you are absolutely free to think what you want, but know that there are no free thoughts, that all thought has consequence. And why I, what I mean by this is that all thought is always creating form at some level. So we don't always see the manifestation of that form immediately. Like I say, things tend to cook in consciousness for a long time before they ultimately show up out here on the outer plane. Um, so back in the 1800s, uh, after the Civil War, um, Emma Curtis Hopkins, who is one of our teachers, she had this realization that there is good for me and I ought to have it. So think about that. If God, if the universe has created this divine design and within this divine design there is good for you, if God has gone through all the trouble to create a particular good for you, whether it's health or abundance or love or creative expression, on and on and on, shouldn't you have what God has created for you? Yes, the answer is yes, okay, good, all right. So there is good for me and I ought to have it. Now it seems to me that lately, I don't know, uh, the last number of months, I don't know anybody who doesn't feel like Job in the Old Testament. That everybody has like stuff going on and on top of the stuff that they have going on, other stuff happens and on top of that other stuff happens. I mean, there's, all right, there's weather all over the place. And we've had fires. And we know people who've been hit again and again and again with all kinds of stuff. <sighs> when I first came into Science of Mind more than three decades ago, they used to have a little slogan, and it was, uh, seek the good and praise it. And I like that. I like that. Seek the good and praise it. Because you know, in a lot of situations, it's not easy to find the good. We all understand, right? I mean, sometimes stuff happens, and you say, well, this is absolutely not good. Where the heck is the good in this? In the Bible, it talks about how someone can intend something for our harm that someone can intend to do you or I harm, but God has a way of using it for our good. That has really, really intrigued me. And I realized that part of that is God can only use it for good if I'm willing to believe that there is some good in the midst of all of it. Right? So if I say this is no good, there's no good that can happen from this, this is the worst thing to ever happen, that in fact will be so because your words have power. We teach that to our children in Sunday school. My words have power, right? So remember, though, there's a power for good in the universe, and you can use it. And how we use that power is through our speaking, through our thinking, through the mental images we hold, the feelings that we hold on to. So God in us, I believe that spirit of God, that spirit of consciousness within us always has more to express. And the good that God is, that is, in with, that is within us right now, is infinite. It is absolutely infinite. So if we have I, our idea or some idea in our head that's sort of like, well, that was the best job I'll ever have in my life or that was the best relationship or that was the most creative thing I'll ever do or experience, then we're limiting God with our own thinking, right? We're, we're sort of closing the doors rather than opening the doors for spirit's expression. If we think we're washed up, you know, that is not the spiritual truth because spirit within us is never washed up. God in us is never a has-been. Think of that. God within me is never past its prime. God within me is always just coming into its prime. I believe that's true for all of us. All right? So um, Goethe said years ago, life is a quarry out of which we are to mold and chisel and complete a character. I like that, that we, out of this experience of life, we evolve our own character. Um, I overheard a woman the other day talking about how wonderful her life was. And it wasn't a braggy kind of thing. She was just saying that, you know, a few things were, were going pretty well for her. And I thought, you know, this is really important. It's really important because we have enormous support for what's going wrong. You know, we have enormous agreement for when things are terrible. But I, I, I feel like, we, you know, we've kind of missed the boat. Why don't we have the same agreement for when things are going good? Why don't we have the same agreement for when people are having a good experience or when people are having, having a good day? You know, I believe that, that we are here, 
we, as each of us as souls who incarnated on earth, we came here to lead a full and glorious and magnificent and abundant and happy life. You know, we are here to express that which is within us that is uniquely us, our talent, our love, our abundance, our creativity, and, and that our life is here to, in some way, add to the light and love of the world and make a difference and put more compassion out here. So this is why we talk about finding, you know, Ernest Holmes uses this term of right place, that everyone has their right place. And in our right place, we cannot help but succeed. And we all know, we all understand at this point on the journey that success doesn't look just one way. In fact, it probably doesn't look the same for any two people who are here. Of course, our right place is first in consciousness. When we are in the right place in consciousness, everything follows from that. You know, someone, a woman was saying something to me um, about, uh, uh, she was, she was uh, kind of tired of online dating. I know she's the only one. Uh, but she was, she, was, she was kind of tired of, of, of online dating. And I said, well, you know, I said, I, I, it's, it's not for me to say whether you should date online or not date online. That's not my business. But what I believe is true is that if you have a desire to be in relationship, then God has somebody that's the right person for you. It's, um, so if you are in the right place in consciousness, you don't necessarily uh, need to be on a dating website. Now, you could. And that's okay, right? If that's what you feel guided by the presence of spirit within you to do. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, know that if you were in the right place in consciousness, and this was really the base of our discussion, if you were in the right place in consciousness, you can be in line at the bank or run into the 7-Eleven for a Kit Kat bar. It doesn't matter. If you're in the right place in consciousness, you can meet that person or that opportunity, you know, or that, that uh person who's hiring someone, right? So it, because, why? Because everything starts within. Everything starts in consciousness. So the first and most important thing is that we have to be in the right place within our own mind, within our own consciousness. Um, I, and so I would ask us to, if, if we're going to look at this idea of what is the right place for me to be in in consciousness, we have to look at what is my habitual thinking. You know, when I'm having a little moment where I don't have to be producing any result, where does my thinking go? What am I feeling? What am I speaking? What are the actions I'm taking? Um, I, was, uh, I was in the car, I was driving, and, um, and this is just me. I saw a guy just take a bunch of trash from where he had gotten his drive through lunch, and he just threw it out the window. It made me crazy. It made me as untransformed as I have ever been, <laughs> I'm here to tell you. I mean, and I was in a pretty good place, you know? I, I had meditated, I'd prayed, I'd done my reading, I've done all that stuff I do. But he just like took all the wrappers and just like chucked them, and it's like, I'm gonna say, excuse me, didn't you have parents? Did nobody teach you anything? Weren't you a Cub Scout or, or, or anything? You know, did, I mean, wh who's gonna pick that up? That just makes me so crazy, okay? So you can get, I have a button here. I have a button here, you know, and, and so, you know, because I have the button, the universe says, hey, let's push it. Let's push it again. Let's push it again. Now, the problem, honestly, is not the guy threw his fast food wrappers and cup and everything out the window. That is not the problem. The problem, of course, is my reaction to it. And am I willing to do what I need to do to transform those patterns within me that were suddenly, surprisingly, not loving? You know? Like, all of a sudden, I was, like, not the nice person I liked to think I am and I endeavor to be. You know, because there are spiritual laws in the universe, there are ways to do and be on the earth plane that will serve us. Otherwise, we'll be paying the price for violating spiritual law. And I know by my judging him and my criticism of this person who's just emptying their trash, right? I know I don't like where they were emptying their trash, uh, but they were just emptying the trash that's only going to have a negative effect on me. That's only going to limit me. That's only going to hold me back. Now, I know no two of us are the same. I mean, nothing in nature is exactly the same, right? And yet, even though we're all different, we are also all essential, right? So, well, how was that guy throwing his litter out the window of his car essential? Well, because, you know, if nothing else, he was there to wake me up. If nothing else, he was showing me a gift of where I am unconscious and where I get to say, you know, we are more than what we do 
as beings, as spiritual beings, we are more than the stuff that we do. So is there more to this person than, than he's, he is a litter bug? Yes, absolutely. Okay, absolutely that is so. Um, if you are here, if we're on earth, and obviously we are, then we are needed. God needs us where we are, otherwise we would be someplace else. Yeah, that's how it works, I think. So, you know, sometimes, you know, I say, you know, I don't know what I'm to do. I just don't know what to do. And, and then what I have to say to myself is, okay, infinite intelligence is seeking expression through me. The mind of God is trying to express through me in a greater way. So God revealed to me what I need to know, you know, in a way I understand and can use, because you know how thick I can be, all right? So make it plain, all right? And I will follow this clear guidance, right? And I think that absolutely works. You say, you know, spirit, show me in a way I can understand and use, and I will follow it. You know, so often people will say, oh, I've been banging on doors and banging on doors, and nothing has happened, nothing has happened. And I say, well, you know why? And they say, no, why? And I say, because those were not your doors, all right? And so, you know, you knock on the door, and if the door opens, then you go in. Right? But if the door doesn't open, it was not your door. That's all that that means. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. It doesn't mean God doesn't love you. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with your conscience. It just means that one wasn't your door. Right? So it seems to me that people who are unhappy and dissatisfied with life think they know why. Right? It, and usually what they say is that it's some external event, some outer condition, some circumstance, something that has to do with people around them uh, and what they're doing or not doing. And they say, and we have perhaps said this, they say, well, if I change things out here, then I'll be happy, then I'll be fulfilled, you know, then my life will be okay. To which the response is, ha! Right? <laughs> that is not how it works, because if you think the cause is outside of you, the universe is wired in a way to keep bringing it back to realize that causation is within, right? You know, that so often, you know, people who want people out here to change, who want circumstances and things out in the world to be different, they don't want to change themselves, right? That's why they put all this energy and emphasis into trying to get other people to be different. You know, outer things do not make us happy and fulfilled. You know, what makes us happy and fulfilled? The change in consciousness, absolutely, right? So to say to myself, oh God, if they would just be different, they are. They are different, okay? So now they're different, okay? They're different than they were a moment ago. They're different, right? Now, what are you going to do about that? See, it's insane to want to change our situation, our experience of life, right, while staying the same inside. That's just crazy. Think about it. How can I want my life to be different, but I don't want to do what needs to be done inside of me? Um, I remember reading this. This was a while back, but there was a piece on, um, there are these uh, para Paralympics, right? And, and it was about a guy, his name was Scott Hollenbeck. And uh, he was preparing to swim in the Olympics. This is years ago. Uh, and he was hit on his bicycle by a drunk driver. Uh, and it really, um, it really messed up his spine. It did a job on him. Uh, and so they told him that you know, he would not walk again. His second day in the hospital, he saw something on the television on the Paralympics. And his response immediately, second day, second day, he said, that's for me. And he competed that year. He actually competed that year. You know, so I, I, I'm so struck by that because, you know, when, when, when things are not going well, we can get so like, oh, God, what's wrong in my life, you know? But we always, always have something to live for. You know, we must not wait to begin that living, I think, you know, uh, that people say, oh, well, you know, when I retire, we're going to go on vacations. That was my parents. My whole life, I heard the places my parents were going to go when they retired. And they talked about it regularly. Like this was a real thing. It was not. It was not. Because the time came for them to do that, and, and they were no longer in a position physically or, or, or mentally to, to do the, that kind of travel that they had talked about God, from the time I was little. From the time I was little, I heard them talk about it, you know? Um, so we must, so my point about that is that we must not wait to begin living. You know, that if it's a vacation, or if you're saying to yourself, oh gee, when the kids are grown, or when the weather gets cooler. You know what, there are a million excuses that occurs to me. There are a million excuses not to live now. You know, we can always talk ourselves out of things, right? And I think we can't wait for something outside to happen. 
You know, God is in this now moment. Life is lived in the now. You know, and so lots of people, it seems to me, are waiting to really live someday. In the future, things are going to get better. In the future, I'll have the love of my life. In the future, I'll have a job that I really like. Or I'll have sold my script. Or my kid will get out of college. Or my kid will go to college. You know? Um, and I think what we're doing with that a lot, not in a conscious, intentional way, but we are postponing our good and looking to the future for our fulfillment. Right? And what the science of mind teaches us very clearly is that fulfillment exists in this now moment. The God qualities of joy and beauty and peace and abundance and love, these are all present right now. God is fully present in us, through us right now. So this also means that healing is available and present right now. I think we give form and expression um, to that which always was and, and always will be. So I think we have to decide, regardless of how it looks, that our life is great right now. I know that's absolutely counter to probably what we've heard most of our life. You, see, you say, well, my life isn't great right now. I have all these things I want to change. I want my health to get better, and I've got to make more money, and I've got to, you know, blah, 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 pay off this credit card and do this and that. How that will happen is by making a decision that our life is good because our life is one with the life of God, that our life is, in fact, great right now. Because then when we take that approach that my life is great right now, the universe rushes in to support that more and more. And um, I think it's a mistake to, to sort of fall back and be dreamy about the past, you know? Um, because the truth is that we are blessed right now. And I think it's extraordinarily important to recognize that on a daily basis. Shakespeare, good old metaphysical William Shakespeare said, all things be ready if the mind be so. Think about that. All things be ready if the mind be so. And what we say to ourselves so often is, oh my God, I'm not ready. How often have we said that? Oh, I'm not ready, I'm not ready. Opportunity's knocking. Oh, I'm not ready, I'm in the shower. You know, opportunity's knocking. All things are present in the infinite mind of God as ideas, as mental patterns, as principles. In the book of Proverbs, it says, hope deferred maketh the heart sick. Right? So when we put things off, nah, that's, that's not usually so good. And I know that so many of us have struggled with procrastination, you know, that we say, oh, well, this is, you know, this is not enough. You know, other people are ahead of me. Uh, they've worked so much harder. I'm going to have to wait. I'm going to have to really earn it. You know, those thoughts are like putting your foot on the hose, right? The, or, or, you know, when you crimp the hose and the water doesn't come out. We're here to reproduce the qualities and the attributes of God. You know, we should be dissatisfied with anything less than a great expression of God in our life. And at the same time, recognize all of the good that is currently available, that is currently present in our life. Remember, what you focus on increases, what you take for granted diminishes. That's how principles operate. So I think we're working against ourselves when we're using the principles negatively, when we're in fear or resentment or anger or, in, or criticism, or judgment, like I was with the uh, trash person. Uh, when, when we live our, with those things, we're blocking the flow of our own life, of our own good, of our own well-being. You know, so ask yourself this morning, am I willing to be genuinely happy with my present experience? Because I believe that this is a key to how it gets better. See, I think people think if I accept my present experience, I'm telling the universe I don't want things to get better. And it's actually by accepting what's so, that's what paves the way for things to expand and evolve and grow and heal and be better. You know, it is a God-given right, I believe, of every spiritual being, you know, for us, for our lives to, to work, to, to work well. You know, and people say, well, I'll suffer now and maybe I'll be rewarded later. By who? By who? You know, if there's a reward, it's here now. It is not coming later. See, I don't believe that we're going to go from the cradle to the grave with just a few moments of joy or fulfillment, with a few little, you know, dribbles of, of happiness and love and creativity. In Job, it says, the sons of God shouted for joy. And I love that. You know, that the sons of God shouted for joy. And there was another saint, uh, St. Irenaeus, who said, the glory of God is found in the person who is fully alive. I think that is so beautiful, 
know that God is expressed by means of us when we are fully, fully alive. You know, great ideas don't come out of a gloomy mind. A depressed, negative mind state is not a center of great love and creativity. We're here for a fulfilled life. I believe that's so for all of us. And there is a right and a wrong way to, to be, to think, to speak, to act. And you'll know what that is by what's coming back to you. Right? So intelligence within us knows what we must do. Right? That, that's already so. The spirit of intelligence within us knows exactly what we must do. The qualities of God exist within us right now. And our life is only limited by our limited concept of it. Let's pray. So we turn our attention, thank you. We turn our attention inward for a moment and just remember that we are surrounded and filled with God's infinite loving spirit. That God within us is the most true, real thing about us. And so in this awareness, I claim for each and every one of us that we have the eyes to see the good stuff in our life. We have the eyes, the ability to recognize and embrace and appreciate all of the blessing that's taking place. And to also have this higher purview in consciousness that even when things don't look good, to know that God can use even that for our greater good. So we include in our prayer today our family members and friends, parents and children, loved ones, all of those who we hold near and dear. And we say God is right there, right where they are, surrounding them, filling them, blessing them, sustaining them in every good and perfect way. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world in which we live. So everything that's been pulling at our attention in these recent weeks, whether it's fires or floods or whatever's going on, we know that God is present even in the midst of that. And a greater good is coming out of all of it, whether we see the physical evidence for that currently or not. Because we believe it, it is so. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere. We bless synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are all blessed by being together, that we all get raised up, we all get to be healed. And so with a full heart, I say, thank you, God. I release this word, and so it is. Together we all say.